uh, we're already at, uh, at time for our next speaker. Let me give you a bit of background on how I got to, to know Valerie. Um, so uh, some months ago during the pandemic, I got a random email from a, from a colleague of mine uh, sharing uh, a TED talk saying, hey, Andre, you should watch it. I think, I think you, you, you might enjoy that, uh, that video. So I watched the video, loved it. And knowing myself, um, what I did is uh, trying to find a way to, uh, to reach out to Valerie Condos that I'm gonna to invite to uh, get on stage right now and open her, uh, her camera. Um, so uh, Valerie, uh, there's so many things I wanna say about her. So uh, Valerie is a gymnastic coach. There she is. Um, and a pretty famous gymnastic coach. So she's been seven time uh, NCAA champion uh, coaching at UCLA Gymnastics. Um, she's been inducted also to the UCLA Hall of Fame, uh, four-time coach of the year, and she was named coach of the century. Like, can't beat that, right? <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Um, so when I uh, reached out to Valerie some months ago, um, it was a fantastic, for me, it was a fantastic conversation. Uh, I admire something when I watch her TED Talk, and, and I think um, the, the link will be posted in, in, in the chat box. Uh, what came to mind for me was her vulnerability, like being able to self-reflect on her practice uh, and be able to be willing to change and, and, and be better. So Valerie, nice to see you again. It's awesome to have you here. And, 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 uh, and, and I'll, I'll let you go right away. Thank you so much. This has been riveting. Um, I, don't, I, think, I don't know if John's still on or not, but I literally have read every single book John Gordon has written starting with the energy bus years ago in my coaching career. And it did have a shift. It did shifted my mindset. Um, so to hear him speak almost live and in person, I took copious notes and I'm just riveted right now. I just want to go lead another team somewhere. Um, but thank you so much for having me. And um, as the athletes are wonderful, um, it's, it's interesting coming in, in your as a coach, coming along and having success as I have had tremendous success, but then stopping and asking the question, is all winning success? Just because you earn a national championship or a gold medal, is that success? And sadly, I had to stop and think about this the last few years with what happened in the gymnastics community with the uh, sexual abuse scandal. And I was thinking, dang, the USA has won so many medals for so many Olympic uh, quadrilliums, but it, can we say that's been success? And so that was the impetus for my TED talk. And I think we all can agree and understand that winning is really, really, really fun. Every, I would say 100% of us that are on this Zoom right now are extremely competitive and we hate to lose. But I'm here to share with you that all winning is not success. And when I thought about what I was going to say in my TED Talk, TED Talks are really daunting because you got to put all these thoughts into now they're 12 minutes. So I had to make this very concise. But the first thing that I do believe is absolutely true is that all across America and around the world, we have a crisis. And I do not use that word lightly. We have a crisis in the win at all cost cultures that we have created in our schools, in our homes, in our businesses, in politics. Hello, winning at all cost has become acceptable. And as a society, we honor, we literally honor the people at the top of the pyramid. We effusively applaud those people who have earned those championships and elections. But I think we all need to be super, super honest with ourselves that winning at all cost does develop and create damaged humans as they leave their environments. With straight A's, this is not me talking, this is statistics and facts, with straight A's, kids are leaving their schools emotionally damaged. We already know this with trophies and medals, athletes are leaving their teams and their sports damaged. And with massive, huge profits, employees often leave their businesses as damaged individuals, emotionally damaged. We have all become so hyper-focused on the end result 
I know I'm preaching the choir here, but when that end result is a win, we often sweep the damage under the proverbial rug. So as this webinar, this Zoom is appropriately named Timeout 2020, I am calling for a timeout across the world, across all venues. We need to redefine success. And when I thought about this, it's so simple, but real success in any avenue is developing champions in life through whatever we're going with, regardless of whether we win or lose. So as a coach, I had to translate that. And the first thing I realized is you may be able to dictate your way to a win, but you cannot dictate your way to success. Let me take you back, 1990, um, I was offered the head coaching position of the UCLA women's gymnastics team. Full disclosure, I've never done a cartwheel. I was not a gymnast. I've never been a gymnast. I grew up in the world of ballet. I had zero gymnastics training. And the most important thing, as John just talked about for 30 minutes, was it's not that I didn't know about gymnastics, which I didn't. I had never been a part of a culture, a team culture. I'd been a part of a theater culture but not a team. I didn't know what a healthy culture looked like. I didn't know how to develop one. I didn't even know if it was important or not. So the best thing that I could do was mimic other winning coaches. So this was the early eighties. Uh, excuse me. When I was the head coach, it was 1990. Well, at that time, coaches were tough talking, tough minded, relentless, oftentimes mean-spirited, and I acted, because I grew up on stage, I acted like a coach who was set to win. And as you can imagine, my first few seasons were absolutely horrible. A few years after putting up with my horribleness, our team asked me for a team meeting, which I got super excited for because I love team meetings. And for two solid hours, they gave me example after example of how my coaching style was hurtful and demeaning. And they said things to me like, Miss Val, we want to be built up, not torn down. We want to be empowered, not belittled. We want to be supported. Literally, I mean, you put all that into context. I'm a coach. They want to be coached up, not torn down. They wanted to be motivated not pressured or bullied. As you can imagine, that was my timeout. And I could either stand up and say, I'm the leader of the program, it's my way, the highway, or I could change. Being a dogmatic dictator may produce compliant, good, loyal, good, loyal soldiers, but it will not develop champions in life. And I think the reason why so many coaches do simply dictate is because it's easier. It's easier to give orders than to actually figure out how to motivate someone to want to change whatever they need to change to be better. Motivation, as we all know, takes a really, really long time to take root. But the magic is that when it does, it is literally character building and life altering, where dictating change is not. So I realized that our team needed to be fortified as whole human beings and not just athletes who won, who could earn me another ring. Success for me shifted from focusing on winning to focusing on developing champions in life through sport. And I knew if I did that well enough, that champion mentality would translate to the competition floor, and it did. That's when we started winning. The key ingredient, as John mentioned, to any leadership is relationships. And the key ingredient to relationships, in my opinion, is trust. Trust built through patience, trust through, built through respectful honesty, Trust built through accountability. 
and all of those ingredients that we call tough love. A perfect example of this, you may have seen her full routine, it went viral two years ago, is Caitlin Ahashi. She is one of the greatest gymnasts in the world. Her full routine now has over 180 million views. She earned two SBs from it. But when she came to UCLA as a freshman, she was broken in body, mind, and spirit. She'd grown up in a typically bullish sport environment and was damaged. And so her freshman year, she comes in, and as you can imagine, she found her inner rebel quite well, to the point where she was not able to do gymnastics near, nowhere near the level that she was recruited to do it. Uh, I'll never forget, it was February of her freshman year. We're mid-season in our competition season. And we're in a team meeting, and Kate Onohashi very clearly and unapologetically says, I just don't want to be great again. Okay, so as a coach, what do you do with that? Here's one of the, literally, she's one of the greatest gymnasts in the world. She's the last gymnast to have beaten Simone Biles. She doesn't want to be great. So my first thought was, coming from a dictator, business person, coach, what the heck am I giving you 60 grand a year for? And thankfully, I didn't say that. I calmed myself down and I put some space between what I, how I wanted to respond. And I realized Caitlin didn't want to be great because everything associated with being great to her was misery. My job was to figure out how to motivate her to want to be great again. And the first thing I had to do was help her redefine success. It's not just winning. What does success look like for you now, Caitlin, as a mature gymnast? My enthusiasm for this challenge became determination when she looked at me and said, Miss Val, I just want you to know everything you tell me to do, I do the exact opposite. I was like, okay. So I took a deep breath and slowly embarked on the process of building trust. And I had to prove to her, one of the greatest athletes in the country, that first and foremost, I cared about her as a person. Part of my strategy was only to talk to her about gymnastics inside the gym. Outside the gym, we talked about everything else, school, boys, family, whatever. And slowly, through that trust, Caitlin started to find her joy. She started bringing her whole self not just the athlete to practice every day. And as she told me later, it was when she really started feeling and rediscovering her self-love and her self-worth. And Caitlin was able to bring that joy to her gymnastics. She earned the national title on floor her senior year, her junior year, and she helped us earn our seventh national championship. So the question I ask for you are, are think about the Caitlin's in your life. And for those of you that have children, think about what you're telling your kids. As we all know from the research, the most important time that you're sharing with your kids is that car ride home as an athlete for your kids. What are you telling them? What questions are you asking them? Are you asking them questions about winning? Did you win? How many goals did you score? Or are you asking them questions that are, that are going to help them build into a champion in life? What did you learn today? Did you help a teammate? And then the most important part of asking the question is quieting our minds and quieting our mouths and sitting back and listening. Because listening is one of the greatest gifts we can give another human being. Another example of this, the greatest example that I have in my 37 year coaching career of really listening came that same year. Kyla Ross is one of the greatest gymnasts that's ever done gymnastics. She was the first gymnast to have earned the trifecta, an NCAA individual title, a world champion gold medal, and an Olympic gold medal. She's also not one for small talk. So it was kind of odd to me when Kyla came to my office one day and just started talking about everything, about school everything but gymnastics, her family, her boyfriend, graduate school, everything. And I thought, well, what is going on? 
thankfully, I was mature enough in my leadership to shut up and listen. And after two hours of this, Kyla took a deep breath and said, Miss Val, I'm going to share something with you that I just realized that I've not shared with anyone else. That I was sexually abused by Larry Nassa, USA Gymnastics team physician. Kyla came forward to join over 200 young women, survivors of Larry Nassa. And she shared her story and she used her voice from that day forward to invoke positive change for our world. Kyla Ross is a perfect example of developing into a champion in life, for life, through sport. I, as a head coach, felt it was extremely important to provide a safe space for Kyla and our other athletes. And so I chose to discuss the Larry Nassar abuse tragedy opening with them in the middle of our season. Like the last thing coaches are supposed to do is invite distraction, right? Oh, I did it. I had two team meetings and we talked about what their teammates, what their friends were going through, what one of our assistant coaches, Jordan Weber, had just given her impact statement was going through. And later that year, we won the national championship two months later. And at the end of all the hoopla, Kyra Ross came up to me and said, Miss Val, I want you to know one of the reasons why we won this championship was because you chose to discuss the elephant in the room. You chose to talk about this horrible sexual abuse scandal that has affected not just myself, but so many of my peers and my friends. To the point where she said, Miss Val, I literally felt myself walk taller as our season went on. And when I walked onto the championship floor, I felt invincible simply because I had been heard. What an amazing lesson for me, right? As parents, as coaches, as leaders, we are now in a beautiful time of our history that we can no longer lead from a place where winning is the only metric of our success. Because when we do that, our ego sits center stage. When our ego sits center stage, we know this from statistics, when, our e when we lead from our ego, that produces broken human beings. And I am so thrilled to have had a career long enough to be able to say emphatically, it is absolutely possible to develop champions in all walks of life without compromising the human spirit. And it starts with defining success for yourself and from those you lead. And then it talk, and then after we define success for ourselves, we need to constantly, daily, self-assess and self-examine of whether our actions are in alignment with our goals. We are all coaches in this world in some capacity. We all have a collective responsibility to help develop champions in life for our world. That is what true, so imagine that world. Imagine the day that we all wake up and every one of us is, is tapping into our inner champion and being that person. And we are helping other people be that person. That is what true success looks like in our world now. And in our world of sport, that is what I call a win-win. So thank you very much for letting me share with you my passion. As you can tell, I get really passionate. I get really close to the camera. But um, I'm really excited about the time that we're living in right now because we have this opportunity for so much great change. So thank you for having me. Valerie, thank you very much. Like I, I'm so happy that we were able to share your important message with so many, so many coaches. It, it got me right here when, 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 when you were speaking. And I think collectively, um, I know we've used uh, having an athlete center approach um, in coaching, but I think, I think we need to change that message to a person center approach. 
moving forward. I think it's so so important. And 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 for for you coaches um, following since the, since this morning, you see a constant where coaches self reflect on their practice, ask themselves questions, learn from their athletes. And that's my big takeaway from you, Valerie. And I I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to 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 be with us. Mm-hmm.